Guitar practice session 92824. These are fairly sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need to be working on, then give a recap so you have an idea of what you're getting into. This, of course, being that recap, hoping the practice sessions help me formulate a routine, help me to verbalize what I'm trying to practice so that I can better internalize it myself, possibly providing information for others if they're working on similar things, possibly also providing for feedback if anybody sees a better way to do the types of things that I'm doing here. We're going to have our Excel worksheet. Our Excel worksheet might be a little bit different than other worksheets you've worked with in that we're going to try to have everything going the same way to make it as visually easy to follow as possible, meaning when I'm behind the guitar, I have my low or heavy string on top. We're going to be organizing our worksheet in the same way as though we're behind the guitar with the low or heavy string, the one closest to the ceiling on top. And I'll also orientate my guitar on the screen, making it look like I'm left handed so that uh, you can see it in the same orientation as the worksheet and from your perspective on your guitar. I'll try to also line it up to the place that we are working on so that you could see our hand basically lining up to the same you know place on the fretboard where we are working. I also think it's useful to just try to practice uh, giving like a demonstration of what you're working on so that because it gets internalize the information yourself. So if you want to use this worksheet for your own practice problems or presentations or whatever, don't worry about plagiarism or anything. I'll try to give you access to the to the worksheet and you can adjust it. You can use it in any way that uh, you think would be appropriate. And uh, we're going to be working this time on the Dorian. We're looking at the Dorian mode, what I call absolute mode number two, but moving then to shape what I call shape number four. You might also call it a C shape. You could call it like a, a note one of the position would be a Phrygian shape, or if I call it the note two or major uh, shape of it, it would be the Lydian shape, right? So this shape could be called uh, different things in terms of, uh, so that's gonna be the idea. We're gonna be looking at it up here in the 12th fret, which is where everything repeats again, so that we can practice the fingering of it this way. And we'll try to also look at it in the open position, although I didn't spend as much time looking at it there, but it's really important to do that uh, because oftentimes we learn the open position and then, but we can't really visualize what we're doing when it's not in open position because we're shifting our fingers up. For example, I learned the open position basically by learning the next position up. So I didn't really learn position four here. I thought, hey, I'll just learn position, what I call position five. And then I know all the open strings are good to play. So I could just let go of a string and play the open position. So I'm not really visualizing oftentimes these, this position. I'm visualizing this position and just saying I can throw in an open string whenever I want. But it's useful, of course, to go back and visualize this position in open position so that you can see how it relates to what we're playing, you know, up here. So ironically, although I play in open position more than any other position, it's probably the least position that I've kind of thought out in detail uh, because of because of that, which is kind of weird. I think I'm probably not the only one where that's <laughs> where that's the case. So I'm going back and looking at those. Uh, we're, we're, I'm going to try to think about too the idea that that uh, when I'm in the Dorian. I want to be able to play in Dorian and be able to know whether I make a major or minor uh, chord from every note in the relative positions one through seven. That's just a very practical thing to do. And we've kind of been doing that in the past because I've been converting to the, the, the numbering system that's related to the major scale, which helps me to determine whether I would build a chord which would be major, major or minor. But I want to try to work into the routine more, more so to try to think, okay, if I'm playing in Dorian, which of these, I'm trying to memorize which notes would be constructing a major and minor chord from that perspective. And if I can't get it from that perspective, then we can use the math and think about the, the related modes, which are related to the major scale, which is the numbering system that I'm going to keep using in part for, for that reason. So then we'll go up here. I will uh, list out the shapes that I'm going to break this out into position four within position four. I have two analogies that I want to try to do simultaneously, although it's kind of confusing to do that. 
but I'm trying to get as much in my practice sessions as I can, meaning I want to break down the five strings plus the repeat string. So five strings shapes into a, what I would call a two, a two string, two string, one string shape, which is usually what I'm calling, that's what I'm going to call the house double stop and double stop house shape, this, the house analogy, which means I usually, when people use this shape, they see it in terms of the seven notes. And then if they want to remove two notes to bring it back to the pentatonic, then we could do that. And then I'm also going to look at it in terms of what I call the five note pentatonic shape, which I also call the hamburger and barbell shape, uh, which is the pentatonic five note shape. And then think about how we would add the two notes to get from the five note shape to the seven note shape. So I try to think about those kind of at the same time. And then we're going to count up our intervals from uh, D to D here. And then I go backwards and I basically stop there. I get a little worn out uh, uh, at that point. Then I, I start to noodle around with this idea I've been putting together, which is basically just saying, uh, if, I look at, if I look at these uh, notes in any scale, then when we write a song from it, most of the time when I watch people, I'm like, how do you write a song? Well, all you have to do is like look at a scale and then you just pick the notes, the first, the third, the whatever of that scale. And then you just determine whether it's a major or minor chord, which makes perfect sense. That makes sense. But it seems like there's not that many combinations when we just look at this. But when we add all the different kind of things that we can do, the combinations, of course, are infinite. So there's still like an overkill of combinations that I think stop us from kind of noodling around that way. They, they, they make it so we freeze up. So I think one way is to like kind of isolate what you're thinking of, and then you can play around within that area, kind of like writing a poem or something like that. You have, well, this is how you write it. I'm going to write it in this whatever meter or something. And that actually frees you up a little bit because it actually limits the options. So, so I'm going to say, well, how could we do that? Well, I tried to list out just the numbers here. Uh, I need to do this better, but I listed out like if I play the one and I'm playing in the key of whatever, I could say whatever key, but let's say major, I play the one and then I try to make every combination that if we only had three chords that we were playing, uh, obviously we could play four or more chords, but three chords gives us enough for like a song and uh, it has pretty many combinations, as you can see with just three chords. And then I start, and then whatever mode I'm in, in the major mode to start off with, I'm going to say we start with a C and then we end with a C. So there would actually be four chords starting with a C and then like ending with the, the one, starting with the one and ending with the one. And, and this combination I put together, I put a combinations together where I don't have any repeat ones. So in other words, this is one, two, three, and I, and I don't have a one, three, two, because it would be repeating, but I think I should. So this is, I want to redo this to add the combinations where I would have all combinations, except the ones that are repeating. We can also have combinations where I play the two twice or something like that. I don't have those combinations in here either. So this isn't even all the combinations you can play, even with just starting on, you know, the one, right? Uh, but it gives us a start. So I was trying to kind of toy around with that and say, okay, well, what if I then systematically go through every combination and try to think of like the pros and cons of every combination, which I can do in the major. And then I can use this same list to think of myself in every other mode, like the Dorian. I kind of mess around with the Dorian. And then we'd run into that problem, of course, of, well, if this is the second of the Dorian, is that a major chord or a minor chord, right? I can I know all the notes are the same because I'm playing in the related Dorian, which has all the na same notes as the major scale, but constructing the chords becomes somewhat difficult. Uh, and I can either convert my thinking to the major scale in which I try to memorize one, four, five is major, two, three, six is minor and, and so on. Or I can try to start to uh, memorize every other mode to know which relative position is a major or a, a minor. And I can also use my math to kind of convert like the second of the Dorian to the what what the relative mode is. And, and the major or minor mode will tell me from a practical perspective, if I need to be playing a, a major 
triad, three note triad or a, or a, a minor. So I kind of toy with that idea a little bit and just kind of noodle around with that. I also think that if I played these three notes, then I have something to tinker with, not just in open position, but then I can think, okay, how can I play that in the next, in position two or position four, like up and down the guitar with bar chords or with leaning back chords. Or, and then, and then of course, on top of that, we can then think about adding not just the one, three, five, but other notes to it. Like, of course, the seven would probably be the next note and then the nine and so on and uh, so forth. So that's, uh, and then I also kind of start to think about at the end, like I was hearing about these different ways to noodle around with making uh, the, the timing a little bit different. So if I'm just trying to improvise and picking around, then uh, how do I, like, like I could start to think about the timing, kind of like a drummer thinks of the timing, breaking it out into into sets of like of like a three one three two or something so that when i do my picking that might adjust like the rhythm of my picking more like a like a very drum beat or something like that which could give me different sounds i, I was listening to uh the rick beato seems to be quite popular i think i, I do like his interviews I, I don't really listen to like the band's most of the time when they do interviews, because I don't really care what their personal lives are like or anything like that. But I did, it is kind of interesting to hear them talk about making what do they do to make their songs or why, you know, and so and that seems. To, and so this idea th this guy was talking about that, I probably misconstrued it uh, completely because I was kind of watching it in the evening. And but I was trying to play with that idea. So that's what I do. Uh, that's what we do. Continuing on with what I would call position number four, looking at mode number two, that being the Dorian mode, noting that we're gonna be using those absolute mode numbers based on the major scale, otherwise known as mode number one, the Ionian mode. In other words, if the major scale or Ionian mode is the first, then the second of that scale is the Dorian, and we're gonna be using that absolute mode number. So we're in the Dorian mode, what I would call absolute mode number two, the relative positions first through seventh listed on the left and the notes over here. And then we're gonna have the modes related to that, but the mode numbers will be based on the major scale, hopefully helping us to orientate ourselves. Now, another thing I'd kind of like to get down as I go through this process, I'm gonna try to work it into our system, trying to get as many things in my mind that I am running over uh, with these practice sessions is that when I look at the the major scale one of the practical issues we have of course is determining if i was to play chords in the major scale do i play a major or a, a minor chord so in the major scale we basically have to memorize the pattern of the first would be a major and you indicate that with an uppercase roman numeral and then the second is a minor the third is a minor and then those are lowercase Roman numerals. Fourth is a major, fifth is a major, the sixth is a minor, and seventh is uh, the Locrian. So we just basically, most people just kind of memorize that when you're trying to, from a practical standpoint, play a song in a key, we're gonna say, okay, well, I'm just gonna come up with notes in that key and then I can build a chord around it. And the question is, do I build a triad, a three note chord that is major or minor? Most people not worrying too much about the rest of the notes like you know the seventh and the ninth and so on and so forth, they're just really kind of thinking triads usually. And all we need to know then is whether or not it's gonna be a major or minor third uh, within the chord that we're constructing. So, and that, but we can also think that's basically what the modes are saying too. The, the modes are, are also determined by whether they're major or minor, by whether they have a major or minor third. So. So that so we basically just have to memorize that pattern and most people get it down with the major after a little practice. One way to memorize it is that the one, four, five, the bluesy kind of progression, usually characterized as kind of a bluesy progression, one, four, five are the majors. And that leaves the, the two, three and six as the minors. And then the seven is going to be the funny one, the diminished one. Now, of course, when we move on to other modes, then it becomes more complicated. One of the problems is if I move to like a minor mode, the second most popular mode, then it's still a little bit easier because if I know the major progressions, the minors, the one, four, five of the minors are all minor. 
right? So that's kind of nice. So you have that to work off of. Uh, and then of course, and then if we can remember that the second of the Aeolian, the minor scale is that funny uh, Locrian one, then we can say, okay, the rest must be major, which leaves the three and the six and the seven are major. So we can kind of, most people start to get down the major and then we kind of get down the minor. Notice the other way you can look at this. I could just say, if I use these absolute numbering systems over here, I can say, well, I'm really playing around the sixth. So I could just, just pretend that I'm playing around the sixth and I just note the same numbering system. And I know that the sixth is a minor when I compare it to the major mode, right? And I know that, and so that, and I, and so that's, kind of helpful to be able to see that because once I see the notes in the minor scale, it's going to be difficult for me to convert the new numbering system one through seven to which ones of them are going to be constructing a major chord and a minor chord. For this one, for me, this was an issue because a lot of people that learn on like the piano, I think they learn like the C scale first because that's all the white notes. So that just makes sense to do. On the guitar, a lot of people learn this this pattern like right in the middle of the guitar, which could be in the key of C, but it kind of, when you just play it from top to bottom, it sounds like it's in the key of A minor. So I start playing in the key of A minor naturally is what I ended up doing. And the problem is when I, when I, whenever you talk to people or try to learn, like, do you build a major or minor chord? They always based it off the major scale because that's the starting point for most people learning music theory to look at the majors. And it's like, well, I'm trying to look at the minor. So how am I going to do that? Am I going to name the minor scale after, like call that a six instead of a one? And then I can, and if I did that, then I can see that the same numbering system would apply out to the relative major. But of course, when you talk to other people, they're not going to call it the sixth of the major. They're going to call it the one of the minor. So then we have to basically start to convert and say, well, is the one of the minor major or minor? Obviously it would be a minor. Uh, what about the two? So if I go to the two, the next note is going to be a Locrian. That's weird. If I was to build a chord around it and then the, th and then, you know, you got the three and that would be the major and so on and so forth. So we start to memorize the minor on that one. Uh, but then, then when we get to like the Dorian, it's even more funny, right? So now it's like, okay, I'm in the Dorian. So now I can't even say it's a minor mode, but I can't really say that the one, four, five is no longer the minor note, the minor chords. So again, I could just say, well, the Dorian is the second mode. I'm just going to use the same numbering as the C major scale, but play around the second. And I know that the second, uh, the third and, and the sixth are the minor that I can build a minor chord around. But when you talk to other people, they're not going to say, you're not going to say that usually they're going to say, well, it's the first of the Dorian. So then I, I got to start to memorize, well, the first of the Dorian is, uh, is a, is a minor chord. If I construct a chord around it and the second of the Dorian is a minor chord and the third is a major and the fourth is a major. So I'm going to try to work that in, like, as we go through these different modes to try to give some memorization as to, uh, <clears throat> would I build a major or minor chord on it. Okay. So then we have our intervals over here and the intervals are going to be compared to the main minor. And because it's a minor mode, the Dorian indicated by the lowercase Roman numeral, <clears throat> the main minor is Aeolian and the minor modes have, have all the perfects are the same as the major for, for the main minor Aeolian, but it's still the main minor has a, a major second. So that's the thing that's funny. Everything else is either minor or perfect. And that means that when we compare the other minors, which is Dorian to Phrygian, the two minor modes to the main minor, Aeolian, the minor scale, there's going to be one interval that will be different than the minor scale. In the case of Dorian, that's the ninth, which has the uh, major six instead of the minor. So we have the perfect first, that makes sense. The major second, which makes sense, even though we're comparing it to the minor mode, because the minor mode of Aeolian or minor scale also has a major second, has a minor third. That's the defining characteristic of a minor mode as it is with a triad chord to determine whether it is minor or major. If it's a minor third, it's a minor mode, it's a minor chord. And then we have the fourth, which is a perfect fourth. The fifth is a perfect fifth. That's normal for both major and minor. 
And then it's got that funny sixth, which is a major sixth, which is weird because it's a minor mode and it's back to normal with the uh, minor seven. That means that if I look at the whole steps and half step progression, there's going to be a funny step that's different from the major or the related minor going from the fifth to the sixth. And there's going to be a funny step that's out of whack from the related main major to the Dorian going from the six to the seven in order to get back to normal so that we only have that one interval that is different. <laughs> All right. All right. So then uh, at, if I look at position four, it's an interesting position. I should have switched to my uh, electric guitar, but I'm going to try to do it on the acoustic, which means my finger is going to be a mess over here. But the... Uh, the, the thing with this one is, of course, we want to learn it in a, in a place where, where I can finger it uh, because I'm going to have my pattern over here, but it's also the position that would be open position uh, if I was playing in this set of modes, right? It's going to be in the open position over here. Position four will be open position over here. The problem with the open positions uh, is that our fingering, of course, is shifted up because we don't have to. We don't have to hold down this fret. So, so even though know, most people learn the open positions first, they actually confuse all the other positions because our fingerings are totally shifted, and we almost have to re-memorize the shape. Now, notice what I used to do. Like when I learned this, is like think, well, I don't need to know this shape from here to here. Position, what I would call position four. I used to think, well, I'll just learn position five, which is right here, right? The next position up. And by learning position five, then I already have position four because I know all of the open notes. If I'm playing in any of these modes in the key of C or any related mode, that the open strings are, are good to go. So I can always take my finger off. So I never really, when I started, this is kind of a cheater way to, you know, this is a shortcut that might be helpful for a while but then you'd probably don't want to do that for, I used to always say, well, I don't need to memorize this position. Like as if my finger was over here, I'll just remember the fifth position. And then I just know that all the open strings are good. So you can kind of do that for a while, but it's not as, but obviously then you're not really learning position four and you're not really seeing the full position and when you shift everything up the neck and you play it out of some not in the key of c but some other set of modes then that becomes more complicated and whatnot so we'll try to go back and forth and see how the fingering is going to mess up our position uh which still kind of messes me up sometimes when i when i go back and forth and do that and then we'll see it up here where we have to hold down uh the finger okay so position four what is position four uh that's going to be uh I call it position four because if I start on the middle of the guitar, we often, many people call that position, the starting point of position one, position two, position three, and therefore position four starts up, up here. So that's one generic numbering system, but it's quite common to use. And then uh, you could also call it uh, a C-shaped position if you're using the caged system. Why? Because because if I had my open position over here, which is also position four, you can see it would have our C shape. Doo -doo -doo. And then if I play that up here, you know, I'd have to bar it off and whatnot. And again, my fingers are totally wacky. I should pull out the electric, but you have the, the fingering uh, like that as well. Uh, and so that's gonna be the C shape. So I can, if I l learn the caged system, then I wanna see the three note pentatonic and then the five, I mean, three note chord, and then the five note pentatonic on top of it, because that shape will be unique to the five note pentatonic, and then put on top of that the added two notes, and I can build up my shapes that way and name them that way. Uh, you also could, could name it on where you start to play. So this one's a little funny, the fourth one's a little funny, because if you started on the, on the E, then you'd be playing in the Phrygian mode, right? That would be this one. And you, and you could see that because it has that, that uh, minor second. Only the Phrygian and the Locrian have that funny uh, minor second. So I could call this like the Phrygian, uh, the Phrygian uh, shape because if I played from the start of the shape, you're going to get uh, the Phrygian sound. I think I messed it up. And then, and but 
oftentimes uh, the, 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 it's also the Lydian shape. The shape is the same shape you'll remember with the, with the main major scale. It's also the Locrian and the major was over here because if we played this shape, we normally would start on the B if you played from the top note, but we don't usually do that. We play on the C and kind of call that the C shape or e, you know the C uh, pentatonic shape or major shape. Same thing here. You could play on either the E and call it the you could call it the 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 Phrygian shape, but you could also say that it's also the Lydian shape if you play on the second note. So so position four, what I call position four, has a major and a minor component to it. And this is what started to lead me to say that I'm gonna name it based on which note I'm starting from in the position. So I would start on note one of the position Phrygian shape. Note one of the position Phrygian shape means I'm gonna start on this note and that's gonna be the Phrygian shape. Note two of the position Lydian shape means I'm still gonna be playing shape four, but I'm starting on, sh on the position number two, which would make it a Lydian kind of position. So again, there's no perfect numbering system or system for assigning what these shape, you know, the names of these shapes, right? Because all these conventions are what people use trying to get their mind around it. Now we're going to we're going to break up within the shape. We have our our analogy that we have basically five strings, one, two, three, four, five, plus a repeat E. So again, we can break out the components within the shapes. The common components that people break out into is this double stop box shape. I'm calling this the house analogy. And then you have the two note per string hamburger or flat and then the box double stop. Uh, and then the other way people break it out is what I would call the, the pentaton, well, the, the hamburger and barbell, which people usually associate with the pentatonic shape and then extend it to the major shape. So with, with this shape, by the way, with the house and the double stop shape, most people will look at that shape and think about the major shape, the seven notes in the scale, and then subtract to get to the five note pentatonic. So if I'm looking at, at this box, then if I played all of the notes in it, then that would give me the seven notes of a scale. If I want to play the five notes of a pentatonic, I would be playing this side, the top of the box, the C of the box, the top right of the box, and the bottom left of, of the box, right? And I would always be playing the double stop. Okay, and then if I think about it in terms of what I would call the hamburger and barbell, so now now we have what I call the hamburger, which is shifted up now because of the kink in the tuning, and the barbell. This is what people typically often think of as a pentatonic shape, and then you can add the two extra notes to that shape to make it the seven note shape. So those are two different perspectives most people see it one or the other way. I think it would be best to be able to switch our mind to see it both of those ways so we can communicate with other people, but also so that it'll start to make us create different lines as we start to improvise, focusing on like the box and then focusing on the hamburger and the barbell. Uh, and that'll, you know, tend us towards different things. Okay. So then uh, let's go through this. Let's say that we're going to, so we're going to start on the D here. So how do I know I start on the D? Well, if I look at this shape, if I knew this was like the Phrygian uh, shape, then I can say, well, the Phrygian related to the major scale is the third of the major scale. And I'm trying to get to the second of the major scale. So I could, I could go backwards, right? I could say, well, I go from here back uh, would get me to a D and then I can find the related D is here or I can count up, and if I go up, maybe I try to go up to, to I get to the first, which is the C uh, in this case. So I would say we're gonna go from the, uh, the second, uh, this is gonna be, I'm going from the second to the first, so two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, wait a second, if I start here, we're gonna say this is going to be two three four five six seven eight so there's going to be our uh d here on the eight what i was starting as as though i was on the dorian i'm not on the dorian this is the phrygian shape it's a phrygian shape so if i say it's the phrygian it's the third so it'd be three four five six seven eight or one that gets me to my c right here 
and the Dorian is the second. So it'd be one, two, and that gets me to my second, uh, which is going to be the Dorian. Okay, so that makes sense. So now we're on the D right here. So we're in what I would call the Phrygian shape, or or the if it was the first note of the shape, or the Lydian shape for note two of the shape, Lydian shape, or shape number four. But we're going to be playing in the Dorian, meaning we're going to start from this uh, D uh, down here. So that's going to be where we're at. Okay. All right, so let's move up our shape here. So if I went from, if I go to this shape and I'm on this D, so we're gonna say we start on this D, this, if we if we look at our starting point, if we look at the double stop uh, house shape, we're on the Dorian, so it's not in the house. Remember the house is, is this is the box house that's like C's house, and that looks up towards the ocean up here and the minor modes are not in the house except for the Phrygian that's down here in the basement rocking out with that minor uh, second. And so it's over here, the Dorian's over here with the uh, A minor on the double stop. And then it's also, when I go from the house to the double stop, it's still in the double stop, but it's on the top uh, on this side. Okay, and then we can say that if I look at the uh the 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 barbell hamburger analogy this d is going to be encompassing the hamburger now the hamburger the bottom bun of the hamburger has been shifted because let's put this over here and find a hamburger that's not shifted right this would be the hamburger that wouldn't be shifted which would just be a hamburger but now you can see that it's been shifted up here because of the fault line the kink uh, in the tuning so the c is encompassing the hamburger top left of the bun uh top uh, right of the bottom bun so we go from uh the the d we go and we go let's go along this line we go duh, 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 and then we go down to the to the next one we go boom boom this is the two note per string the one shape that's the same whether we break it out into the into the house analogy or the hamburger and barbell analogy same shape and then we go down uh here we go duh, duh, duh. and so this is going to be duh, duh, duh. and this is going to be top of the of the uh, house uh double stop or it's going to be the bottom of the hamburger now of course we see that same shape over here in the open position so if i was down here in open position the fingering is different right so if i'm over in this position the open string is going to be the open string so when I, like i can imagine this as though i'm fingering that string that d and then i go boom 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 this one boom 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 and then we go up to the next one which is an open g playing the g and then the a and then we go to this boom boom uh boom and then i have to kind of switch and think okay but that's not how i'm actually going to play it right so if i'm if i'm playing it up here i'm not going to play that string i might keep my fingers kind of like my fingers are all shifted up a fret and in, in a comfortable position right here as though i'm playing like a C chord, and then I'd be playing the open uh, D, duh, duh, and then the E, boom, and then the open G, and then the A with like my middle finger, and then the open B, and then C, and then D, and then the open E, and then the F, and the G. So for me, it's hard to visualize kind of these open ones. Like when I see this shape down here, I imagine it as just like this shape, right? It's like, oh, it's just a box. But then I can let go and have the open strings and that's good. But obviously I should, you know, to match what I played up here, we should be visualizing it as, well, it's the house double stop uh, that we're fingering that way. Okay, let's go back on up here and say all right let's say we go uh do our whole steps and half steps so we're gonna go from d is a whole step from the first to the second of the dorian 
First to the second is a whole step. Second to the third is a whole step. And then third to the fourth is pinky to pointer, which is a whole step. Wait a sec, I messed up. Uh, second, first to second is a whole step. Second to third is a half step. All right, and then the third to the fourth is pinky to pointer, which is a whole step. And then the fourth to the fifth of the Dorian is a whole step. And then the fifth to the sixth is also a whole step because it's not pinky to pointer, but there's a kink in the tuning right there, the fault line. And then the uh, sixth to the seventh, that's a half step. And then seven back to eight or one gives us our whole step. So where are our holes and half steps? Where's our half steps? That's what the defining characteristics typically. They're in the box. So they're always in the box. And so they're here. Now, because we're starting here and we're going to the bottom of the box, that means that we're gonna have two notes in between before we get back to the top of the box. So we go, it's gonna be on this D and we go one, two, and then two to three is gonna be a half step, three to four, four to five, five to six, and then six to seven is our half step. So two to three, six to seven. Two to three and six to seven. Those are our, our half steps on the Dorian. Now the other thing that's useful to kind of look at sometimes is to say, well, what if I played this Dorian as though it was on the top string? That would be this shape. So it's on the top string over here at the D. So that would be the Dorian shape and it's leaning forward because my starting note here is leaning forward. So if I just played the Dorian shape then, it would be right here, uh, leaning forward, duh, duh. it would be that shape, which is what I would call shape number three. So if I played that, I could say, well, what does that look like? Well, it goes, it goes, uh, let me pull this out one more, duh, duh, like that. So you have, you have this one, duh, 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 duh. so, that that's going to be the shape here same same shape should be down here dun 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 but then it's shifted because of the kink in the tuning so instead of going back to this b the b is right underneath it because of the fault line so another way to kind of visualize how this whole thing is working is we're saying all right i you know if i started at this d that's my shape and then i go my octave is up to this d where that that same shape repeats up here except that it gets messed up due to the fact that the fault line happens. So it can, I can imagine this as though it's position number three, the Dorian position, as though I'm playing on the top string, as long as I account for the fact that when I get to the fault line, I adjust it. All right, so that's another way that might be useful to see it. And so now we're gonna go, okay, let's do our intervals. So if I go from the first of the Dorian to the second of the Dorian is gonna be a whole step, like normal. And that's gonna be a two note away major second. The major second is normal for a minor mode, which is, seems weird, but it's not. That's what the main minor has. The only minor that doesn't have that is the, uh, is, is the Phrygian. And then you got the Locrian, but it's kind of on its own thing. And the inverse of that would be 12 uh, minus two, uh, which would be a, a 10 note away uh, major or minor, minor seven. So if I see this shape, we're going here to here, that's gonna be a two note away major second going backwards, 10 note away uh, minor seven. We also know that the second of note number, the second of mode number two, the Dorian, is gonna be, because that's the second related to the major mode of Ionian, it's one step up. So if I started on one, the Ionian mode, the C, one step up would get me to the Dorian. So therefore I'm gonna take whatever mode I'm on, mode two minus one gives me one, plus the relative position, which is three, uh, which is two, gives me three, which is the Phrygian mode. So that's gonna give me uh, the Phrygian mode. And I also just wanna start to memorize the fact that on the Dorian, the one of the Dorian, which is the second mode, means 
that that this is a minor is a minor chord that I would build, and the two of of the Dorian is also a minor chord that I would build, and because and one if I can't figure that out and I want to figure that out, I can do this exercise to see which mode it would be to determine if the modes because the mode numbering are related to the major scale. So the three would be the third of the major. And if I know my major minor chords, the, 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 the one, three, uh, the, the one, four, five being major, uh, the two, three, six being minor, then, then that's how I can kind of start to think about that. So I start, I want to start to see if I can kind of memorize the relative positions for the Dorian and then whether or not which ones have the minor mode so you have the minor first for the dorian minor second for the dorian uh and so on all right and then uh, so that's going to be that and if i and then where does the phrygian live so the phrygian is in the house analogy it's in the basement of the house so this is his house it's in the basement over here and uh it would be included if i was to play a pentatonic meaning if i think about the pentatonic from this shape, then we and I and I take it down seven sh seven notes to five notes. I would play the corners of the house, so the C and then the E, removing the B and the F. In terms of the barbell hamburger analogy, uh, the Phrygian is going to be at the top right of uh, the hamburger, top right of the hamburger, which you might be able to see a little bit more clearly here top right because it's kind of hanging out with the Dorian on the top right bun uh, of the hamburger and so okay so let's go to the next one we're gonna go do, do, do. so now we're on the third of the Dorian which is gonna be of course the third being the defining interval to see if it's a major or minor mode and therefore it's gonna be a minor mode uh, and therefore it's going to be a third is going to be a minor it's it's going to be a minor third which is a three note away minor third and I can see that because obviously there's three notes here 12 minus three is nine so therefore if I see that shape going from here to here three note away minor third inverse would be F to D nine note away major uh, nine and the third of mode number two, Dorian, is two minus one, which is one, plus three gives me four. That gives me the Lydian mode. I know that the fourth, because it's a Roman numeral and it's uppercase, it's, I can see that that's gonna be a major mode. It also means, of course, that, that I would be playing a major chord if I was to try to play this. So, so if I was playing in Dorian, the first of the Dorian is minor, the second of the Dorian is minor, the third chord of the Dorian would be a major chord. And if I can't figure that out, I can do this exercise to look at the related mode that I'm saying in absolute terms. And I know that on the major scale, the one, four, five is major, the two, three, six is minor. So that's, just, so, so, I, so I can kind of get there that way, but I wanna start memorizing that on the Dorian, One's minor, two's minor, three's major, four's major, uh, five's minor, and then the six is the low Korean, the seven is major, which is kind of funny, right? <laughs> to to, 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 to kind of get your mind around. Okay, so where's the Lydian over here? The Lydian is, is in the house, so it'd be right here. Now, remember the idea here is if I'm up here on this F, I can convert this into a chord, right? And the question is, of course, what chord would I convert it to? That, that's the thing we're looking at, and it, and it would be a major chord, meaning if you're looking at a triad, you would be picking up a major third uh, as, as opposed to a minor third. M remember that this third is in relation to the Dorian, the first note. If I built a chord from this note, I would be building the third off of this F, which would be a major third away, four note away, major third from the F, right? Okay. See how it's all related. None of it's too complicated, but you end up going in circles and that's when it gets kind of complicated. So then uh, this, this Lydian uh, in terms of the box is on the right side of the box. If I took the seven notes of the, of the house analogy, trimmed it down to a five note pentatonic, I would remove this, the Lydian because we would only be playing the corner, the corners. 
Uh, in terms of the barbell hamburger analogy, it would be outside of the hamburger. So here's the hamburger without the kink and the tuning. It's the one that's outside the hamburger. So that means that if I'm going from a five note hamburger barbell, I would have to add the added note, which I imagine putting a, a baseball cap on top of the bun of the hamburger so that we have the bill moving out here. And that's where you'd be picking up this Lydian going from a five note pentatonic to a seven note scale. All right, let's go to the next one. We're gonna go to the, the next one, which is gonna be uh, this G. So the G d d is gonna be here. So that's gonna be a, uh, the fourth is gonna be a, uh, a five note away perfect fourth. How do I know that? Because if I just look at those two strings, it's five notes away going from one string to the other, unless you're going across the fault line. Uh, and 12 minus five is seven. Therefore the inverse is a seven note away perfect fifth. The perfects are inverts of each other. So whenever I see them stacked on each other, top to bottom, I'm thinking that's a that's a five note away perfect fourth bottom to top seven note away uh, perfect fifth. Uh, we also know that the fourth of mode number two Dorian is two minus one, which is one plus four. That gives me five, which is absolute mode number five, the Mixolydian mode. It's a major mode given by the Roman numeral five. But I also know that the one four five of the major scales are major modes and also therefore create major chords. So that means that the fourth of the Dorian is a major chord construction. So if I if I went to this G here and I was, I was like, okay, now I wanna make a song um, and I have the fourth of the Dorian in it, do I make the fourth a major or minor triad? Well, you're gonna make it a major triad, which means that it's gonna have a major third in it. Uh, instead of a minor third, and 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 by the way, the the we go beyond that to say, if it's in the mixolydian, and you're making a chord in the mixolydian, you can ask, well, what kind of seventh does it have in it, which is beyond what most people do because most people are thinking in terms of triads. So so the seventh, it's gonna it's always not gonna be the same when you get to the seventh, and the ninth, and so on. Uh, as as the third but if we're just thinking triads we can easily just basically say we want to get to the point where i can easily say well the fourth of the dorian is a major mode or that means that we're going to build a song off it we're going to make a major chord if we're building a chord off of the fourth of the dorian all right we also we also know that the the mixolydian is uh the kind of like the bluesy mode so in our house analogy, the seven note house analogy, it's not in the box, even though it's a major mode, it hangs out on its own. In this case with the, the, in the hamburger in the bun of the hamburger or the flat uh, position, this is the one shape that's the same in the house analogy and the pentatonic analogy. Uh, it would be in the five note pentatonic scale. So we wouldn't have to, we never trim anything off of the hamburger part of the seven note shape to get down to five. If I think about it in terms of the hamburger barbell, the five note pentatonic, which you could see over here without the kink in the tuning, then it would be in the middle, the, the hamburger part of it. And once again, of course, it would be part of the five note pentatonic uh, as well as the seven note uh, shape. Let's go to the next one. We're gonna go to the fifth. So the fifth of the Dorian is gonna be a uh, a a seven note away perfect fifth as normal. Uh, I know that because I can count down five, six, seven. I also just see that shape as a power chord. You should start seeing that shape as a power chord unless it's going across the fault line. Inverse of that would be 12 minus seven, which would be a five note away perfect fourth. So top to bottom, seven note away perfect fifth, bottom to top, five note away uh, perfect fourth. We also know that the fifth of no mode number two, Dorian, is two minus one, which is one, plus five, which gives me six. That would give me absolute mode number six, Aeolian mode, otherwise known as the minor scale. We know that that six, if I look at that six, I can see, well, it's the sixth of, the rel of a major scale. The sixth of a major scale is, of course, a minor, a minor. So I would build a minor chord off of it. 
So what I want to be able to say then is that is like, well, the fifth of the Dorian is going to be constructing a minor uh, chord to it. So, so in other words, if I got to this A and I'm building a song in Dorian and I got to the fifth, which is this A, do I build a minor or major triad from it? Well, we're going to build a minor because that's related to the, I, to the Aeolian mode or it's related to the sixth of the related major scale, which is another way to say it's the minor mode, which has a minor third in it. Therefore, the triad is going to be a minor third. So, 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 but I'd like to get to the point where I could just memorize, well, the first of the Dorian's a minor, minor, major, major, minor, crazy, <laughs> diminished, and then major, right? So then we're going to say, where does the minor live? Well, it's not going to be in the seven note house of the house analogy, the seven note analogy of the house. Uh, it's on its own. It's in the hamburger here. Uh, and then it's in the, the meat of the hamburger or the flat in terms of the five note pentatonic barbell analogy. It's once again in the meat of the hamburger, right side of the meat of the hamburger. All right, let's go to the next one. We're going to go then to the sixth. So the sixth, if that's not the sixth. I, see, I went up to the hamburger. We're going to go to the sixth here. Boom. The sixth is going to be the funny one. That's going to be the nine note away major sixth, even though it's a minor mode of the Dorian. How do I know that? Well, it's crossing the kink in the tuning now. So it's five, 10 up to here because of the fault line and then back to nine. Normally, this would look like a 10 note away. Uh, if I see that shape, I'm thinking 10 note away minor seven, but it crosses the fault line. Therefore, it's now a nine note away minor six. So if I play from top to bottom, nine note away minor six inverse therefore is a three note away 12 minus nine is three three note away which would be a minor third remembering that the inverse of a major is typically a minor and we know that the the sixth of the dorian is two minus one which is one plus six is seven that gives me mode number seven the locrian mode so and i also so then i also that's another key point that you can kind of try to memorize on these modes. Where is the Locrian? Because that kind of orientates you. Or where is the, you might also say, where is the related major in it? So if I start on mode number two, then the related major is going to have to be the last bit. Because if we go on around in a circle, Ionian is the seventh. The Locrian, the funny one that has the weird uh, fifth, is is going to be the sixth so that sometimes that's another way that you can kind of orientate yourselves on these modes so if i'm playing through this scale in dorian and i say well now i want to play the sixth of the dorian what am i going to play a minor chord or a major chord well it's more complicated than that you have to play something with a flat fifth in it which is kind of messy so that's the one you kind of avoid oftentimes uh, because the flat fifth uh it isn't really leading itself like it would to the to the seventh like you, you usually play the the locrian because it leads into the the major scale because of that flat fifth gives you tension leads in doesn't work quite the same way on the minor modes and that's why it's a little bit wonky you know uh on the on the minors and we do some other stuff on the minors kind of forcing a flat fifth or forcing that leading tone sometimes even though it's outside of the key to be here. So in any case, that's that. And where's the Locrian located? With, with the seven note analogy of the house analogy, the Locrian's in the house, it's up in the attic over here of the house. Uh, and we would remove it if we go from a seven note to a five note. So if I'm thinking about this seven note scale, I would remove the Locrian and just play the, the corners of the house and then all of the double stop. And then in terms of the hamburger barbell analogy, the Locrian is, here's the hamburger without the kink and the tuning. Here's the hamburger. The Locrian is supporting the bottom left bun of the hamburger. So it's, it would not be played in a five note pentatonic, but would need to be added if you're playing the seven note scale. I imagine that by saying, well, if I have my hamburger, I'm put the ball cap on top of it, making it lean this way, which means I need more support to the bottom left bun of the hamburger looks kind of like a hamburger with a Z on it with the buns sticking out a little bit this way and a little bit that way. 
and so on. You'd have to if you're gonna eat the hamburger, you'd, I would tear off those extra bun parts. I don't need the added bread, man. But it's the support. Otherwise, the hamburger would fall over. Maybe it needs the support of the added bun. But once I'm holding it, I'm just tearing that off, and then eating the hamburger. Okay, so then we're gonna go to the to the to the seventh of the Dorian, which is going to be the uh here uh here and here and so the seventh is a 10 note away minor seven so we're back to normal once again it looks funny because you would think the minor seven would be back here but no because of the fault line it's five notes to here and then five notes to here to get to 10 that would be a 10 note away minor seven and the inverse would be 10 12 minus 10 which would be a two note away major second so if i play top to bottom 10 note away minor 7, bottom to top, 2 note away major 2nd. The inverse of the minor is a major, and the 7th of mode number 2, Dorian, is 2 minus 1, which is 1, plus 7, which is 8. There's only 7 modes, so 8 minus 7 is 1, giving us mode number 1, Ionian, otherwise known as the major scale. So if I'm playing in Dorian, and I'm playing the 7th of the Dorian, I want to start to memorize that the chord I would make is a major third. Why? Because I'm basically playing the related major mode there, which has a major third within it. If I can't remember that, I can do this math, right? I can say, well, I'm on the second mode. Minus one plus seven is eight. Minus seven gives me to mode number one, which is the major mode, which has, of course, a chord construction which would have a major third, therefore the seventh of the Dorian, if I was to play off of the C, I can convert it into a chord by having a triad of a one major third five, right? All right, and so then I'm going to say back home. All right, that took a lot, and I didn't even do this side over here uh, to do the other side, but uh, <laughs> let's try it. Let's try it. Uh, maybe I'll go back the other way in a second let's try a joke though before we go back we'll see what we'll do next time yeoman's work i the, the yo have you ever heard the term yeoman's work man the the media the media thinks the current administration the current administration in the united states is doing yeoman's work and once again honestly i think their their terminology is confused they've changed definitions they snuck in another word that doesn't mean what you think it means, right? This is what they do. This is what they do. I'm telling you, these deconstructionist people, they put in terminology and you're like, wait a second, that, you, that means the opposite of what you're implying it means for crying out loud. So, so they're, they're not doing yeoman's work. They're, they're doing yeoman's work. You know, there's a difference between yeoman's work and yeoman's work. It's because you see yeoman's work originated from hard work done by farmers in like like the middle middle england ages i believe is, is from my my best recollection or understanding whereas yo man's work uh comes from the modern city slang where you're asking like like what a dealer on the corner is selling you know where they're like as in yo man yo man what you slinging today it's yo man's work. Yo man's working on slinging some dried parsley in the parking lot over there today. And, you know, it's, it's totally different than yo man's work. And honestly, I don't, I don't even want to know what the current administration is slinging as, as, they, do the, as they do their yo man's work, you know. What, what, are they, what, what are they slinging today? Whatever it is, it's, it's more deadly than, than eating a... A fentanyl filled twice fried double stuffed Twinkie, whatever they're slinging over there at the administration, I'm telling you. So I don't want any part. I don't know about you, but I don't, I for one don't want any part of it. Whatever they're slinging, whatever they're slinging, I'm staying away from it, man. It's more dangerous, more dangerous than a fentanyl filled twice fried double fried Twinkie. That's double stuffed. Try eating. It's worse than a, than a, a fentanyl filled twice fried double stuffed Twinkie. That's what I was trying to get to. You can get one of those at the carnival. 
yo man's be selling that yo man's yo man sell that kind of, yo man's be slinging those at at the in the parking lot anyway let's go back to the i don't know if that that, that, I, that needs work Deli it's just the delivery the writing was perfect it's just it's just the delivery needs work otherwise it would be it would have been funny and you got to trim it down a bit i just need to trim it down all right let's go back the other way so i'm going to compare everything to this d now and so i'm going to say all right the seventh of uh the dorian is going to be if i go back to the seventh i know the seventh of the dorian because it's a minor mode is going to be a 10 note away minor seven so it's a 10 note away minor seven how do i know that because if i count up this way it's going to be two notes away and 12 minus two is going to be uh is going to be 10 note away minor seven so if i went from this from the c to the d i can see that that's two notes away which would be a whole step otherwise known or you could call it a two note away major second but if i go from the d backwards therefore D back to the C, measuring from the D, that's an 11 note away, minor 7. I also know that the 7th of the Dorian is a, would be constructing a major chord from it because it's related to the mode number 1 Ionian mode, which I won't count out this time. I'm just going to try to memorize it. All right, then let's go back to the 6th. So if we go back to the 6th, that's going to be uh, the funny one. So that's going to be the sixth is a nine note away major six. And uh, how do I know that? Because it's three notes away going this way from the B to the D. And therefore, 12 minus three is a nine note away major six. So if I went, if I saw the shape going from B to D, that would be a nine, that would be a three note away minor third. Therefore, going from D back to B is going to be a nine note away major six and i know that the sixth of mode number two dorian is actually the diminished chord if i was to construct it which means it's going to have a, a a minor third but also a flat uh fifth and i can know that because i won't count it out right now but i also know that that means that it's the seventh mode or the seventh of the related major scale all right, let's go back up to, to the last one. We're going to go to the fifth. To the fifth. And so the fifth is going to be a, the fifth of mode two Dorian is a seven note away perfect fifth. How do I know that? Because if I count this up from the A, uh, it's going to be slanted because that's where the kink in the tuning is. That's where the fault line is. You can see the hamburger's been shifted. The bun, the whole meat of the bun's going to fall over gonna fall over that's why we need locrian steps in here to hold up that hamburger because i don't i don't want the 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 hamburger hitting the table i'm not going to eat the bun anyways i just don't want the hamburger to hit that gross table okay so then but so normally it would be if it was right underneath it would be a five note away perfect uh fourth under underneath but now it's shifted up uh, here, so 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 if I look at it this way, it'd be a flat five. Going, looking at it from the A, uh, so so and all right. So what was I thinking? So going from here to here is five note away, perfect fourth. So twelve minus five is a seven note away, perfect fifth. So if I go from top to bottom, five note away, perfect fourth. Therefore, from bottom to top is a seven note away, perfect fifth. Okay. So let's go back then to the fourth. The fourth boom is going to be a, a five note away uh, perfect fourth. How do I know that? Because if I measure from the G going down, this would be a, a, a seven note away perfect fifth because I'd go five to here, six, seven, which normally a perfect fifth is back one. But because of the kink in the tuning, it's up one here. The, and 12 minus 7 is a four note away perfect four. So if I look at this shape from the perspective of the top note, the G, it's going to be a five note. It's a, it's a seven note away perfect fifth. Therefore, going from the perspective of the D up, it's a five note away perfect fourth. And the fourth of mode number two, Dorian, is a major 
we make a major triad or it would have the major mode of mode number five, mixolydian. So if I, if I built a chord off of the fourth of the Dorian, it would be a major chord is the idea. All right, let's go back then to the, uh, the third, third, and that's going to be a, the third is going to be a three note away minor third because it's a major mode of the Dorian. How do I know that? Well, if I count from the F, it'd be five and then 10 back to nine. So this would be a nine note away, this shape nine note away, uh, which would be a major six. It looks like it's, it's a 10 note away minor seven, but no, because of the fault line right there. And that means that 12 minus 10 would be would uh, 12 minus nine, which would be three, three note away minor third. So if I see that shape, I'm like, okay, top to bottom is a nine note away minor or uh, major nine, bottom to top, three note away minor uh, third. And then we go back to the prior one and say, duh, duh, go back to this one. And so now we're going to go, this is going to be the second the second of uh, the second of the of the Dorian is a two note away major second, which makes sense, even though it, it's a minor mode, because most of the minor modes have a major second still. And the inverse, how do I know that? Because if I count up from the E, it'd be five and then 10. That shape then is a 10 note away uh, minor seven and it's shifted up because of the fault line between these two strings and 12 minus 10 is two, two note away major second. So if I see that shape, I'm like, all right, that is a 10 note away minor seven, top to bottom, bottom to top, two note away major second, and then we can bring it. And the second of a Dorian is, would be constructing a minor chord because it would be the minor mode, otherwise known as uh, the Phrygian. So if I would say the two of the Dorian, what chord should I build off of it? Well, the triad is going to be a, uh, a, a minor triad with a minor third. And then back to the root here. Okay, I'm getting a little tired. I should do it in the open position as well, but I don't know. I'm get, I might have to stop here. I was looking over here uh, just to noodle around a bit on the idea of like trying to build these chords so like if i hide let's hide all of this hide i just want to hide don't delete it don't delete it and so like i was thinking a lot of times when i when i when we think about making a song we, we think okay all I need to do is say these are these are the notes and then and then I can just build majors or minor triads based on them and that's the basis for the song and then we kind of think like well I'll just randomly pick you know the the first to the second or you know the first to the sixth to the five or something and back to the first and you could and we could do that but I think we kind of lose track of just how many combinations there are right because you know and so I was thinking it might be better to like systematically map out uh, the combinations so that we can kind of and then we can kind of more systematically test them out instead of just being like oh it's we're gonna go from this to the, what, what, or you know, and then we can also kind of map them out up here. So I was thinking that that we start off with like, and so so I mapped out here. I can okay. So I was thinking like if we have the one of like the major scale, if we start with the major scale, and just say that I'm gonna try to make a song or a progression in chords that sounds like it's in the major scale how do, what's the easiest way to do that well we start the progression with the that chord now you could have a leading chord into it or whatever but that would be the easiest way to kind of starting to think about it and then i can say okay then then 
so that's going to be so, so then if i map out all the, now and then the question is well how many chords do i want well uh we could make any number of chords t within a song to put together but it's usually like you're going to have between one you know one and four maybe five different chords and then you go back to the one right so i'm thinking that uh the, one of the easiest ways to map it out might say we're just gonna have three chords all the combinations so then i can think all combinations of the three chords and then we end it back at the one right so we have all combinations of the three chords and then we end it back at the one and then we can kind of test out different strumming patterns or or how long we stay on each chord and so on and so forth which if you add all that stuff in means again there's like infinite combinations that that can go together so i'm so i'm thinking it might be worthwhile to kind of like try to map it out more systematically so i tried to do that here it's still not great because i only did like i started to map this out but only having one of each uh, chord these are going to represent the first through the seventh and then i started thinking well i should to, i really should have uh like like if i have a one three a one two three i should also have a one three two and i don't think i added like a one three two right so i could so i, I think i might redo this so that it adds all the different combinations and of course we could add on top of that things where we have a one two two where you know there's a repeat of one of the chords and so on. So this isn't anywhere near all of the combinations, but it can kind of give an idea. And then we can kind of test out these, these different combos. And I was just thinking, so the one, so then the question is, if I look at this, and by the way, if, if we look at this, then we can also use this same construction to then say, well, let's switch to Dorian now. If I switched to Dorian, then of course the one is now a D right and and the, and and so on and so forth so then so then obviously the question that comes up would be if i play in dorian then what's going to be the chords that i play right because if i look at if i look at at the one in d dorian let's say then then i have to know am i going to construct a triad that's going to be major or minor it's going to be a minor right if what if i do the the two of the dorian i have to know that it's going to be a, a, a minor chord that I'm going to construct. How can I know that? Well, if someone says we're going to be playing a one, two, three of a Dorian, one way we can do that is just the simple math that we did with the, with the the converting each position to the relative mode, right? So the two, then it's the same question here. Well, if I'm playing the second of the Dorian, is that a major chord or a minor chord? Well, if I didn't know, I can say, well, the Dorian, I'm gonna say the formula is mode number two, minus one plus the relative position, the second two gives me mode number three. And I know that mode number three, even if I don't know, know the name, is the third of the related major scale. And on the major scale, the one, four, five is major, and the two and the three and the six are minor. So I can kind of go through that, you know, in my mind to try to figure that out if I haven't memorized, which most people haven't, right? What 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 chords are major and minor if I go through the one through seven of like a Dorian, right? And so so that see the problems that come. But in any case, I was thinking it, we could just kind of like if I was going to practice, I was kind of saying the the one the one two three. So if I practice like this one in the key of C, it would be the one. And then the two is, is the Dorian, is a, a minor, a D minor. And then the Phrygian, or the E, which would just be an E minor. Back to the C. So I'm gonna imagine that I'm just doing, I'm starting on the C and I'm ending on the C even though I didn't put the C. Now I put the chords here that are played in the key of C, but we can do that with the other ones too. So I was just thinking, so then I can noodle around with that, right? I could say, well, this is gonna be a one.
trying to change my pattern of I could do it, but you know. I could try to play that same thing up here and so so I could say well this my C is like here one and then the D minor this is a way to play the D minor two E minor you can play that up here three and then one and I could try to play it you know in different shapes you know so I can just be like one Like that, or I could play it like this bar chord, A shape, D minor, E minor. I could play it like that, or I could play it like this bar chord, and then back to uh, the C, which I could go back there to play it, or I could go up here, play the C. So I can I can take those. It's just a way to kind of narrow down all the options that I that I have, and then I can go. Well, what if I played? What if I did the same one, two, and then a four? Which is say, instead of playing the E, I play an F. It should sound more happy because the F is going to be a a major, right? So I can say, all right, let's do the same thing. Just be like. This way. Back to one. That should give me a leading tone because that four, the, the four going back to the one is a common lead back. The one, four, five, the four, or the five going back to the one in a major gives you that kind of leading tone. So one. I can try to play that up here. All right, I could be like, all right, there's gonna be one, two, three, four, or one, two, oh, I missed it. could so then I could and then I can go okay let's try it let's try uh, another one a one a one let's try a one three let's skip down to here and go one three so the three uh, is going to be an E and then to the F a one three four so I should have gone see this is where I should have gone like one three two see I skipped the one three two and I went to one three four that's because I didn't put all the combos in but let's try one three four so we're going to say, okay, let's try. One is a C. Three is an E minor. F. One, C. So that's kind of interesting because it gives you like that dark second and then it's going to give you that happier lead back home, right? So one, happy. E minor heavy kind of takes you down a bit like oh man and then you go to the tap here get you back out of the hole F back home oh I feel safe again Back home, 
and then of course we could try to play that up here somewhere else. So. to noodle around up there and then what if we play like a one here's the classic one four five of course that's kind of like the bluesy or all major sound which oftentimes that's when people add the seven I go one four six, which is the minor. So now I'm going to go one. Four. Right, the four. Did I play that right? Was I doing that right before? <laughs> one. Let's do the one four five again. One four five. So I always do. I do that the other way a lot of the times because I I end up playing that. It kind of reminds me of that. I don't know. But let's do the one, four, five again because I totally messed everyone up with that. So the one, four, five is one, the four, it's an F. And G. And obviously I, I inverted that going one. Both sound cool. I don't. I think I included one and not the other because I didn't invert the other two. But let's try one, one, four, six. One, four, and the six is an A minor. This one has a seven in it, which is is the uh, uh, diminished. So that would be like a B diminished, which is something like this. You can play it like that. Some people play it like this. But the main two notes are these two that gives you that flat five. And if you don't if you don't want as heavy a sound, right? You can play you can play just the 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 one. And instead of uh, the five, you can play the, well, let's keep it at that. What was I thinking? If you want, uh, yeah, you could just do the minor, right? Don't add the flat five and just have the B and the third. It won't give you that tensiony sound, but it'll still be in the progression because now you've got the one, the three, but you left out the flat five, right? But that flat five is what gives it the characteristic diminish. So let's just mess with that. So if I said, now we're on like the one, C, four is an F. Diminish. And that's a leading tone that goes back to the one. So it's not something that people use often and it gives you a little bit of flavor. So if, so if you use it in a major, that actually, people might be like, oh, he's got a diminished in there, right? Gives you that rev resolution. So we go one. Then 
so then if I, I took I could take these same things and instead of I'm not going to use these notes over here but say okay how can I convert this to like the Dorian so if I was on if I was on the Dorian let's just go down here and so let's let's say I did like this in the in the door like a one four five of the Dorian if it was in the major that would be all the major I would make major chords from it but in the Dorian the the I have the six is a if I'm in D Dorian, then I have all the same notes, but now the one is, uh, is a, is a, is a, is a D, right? Uh, so, the, and, and it's going to have a minor, uh, chord construction. So we'd be starting on the minor chord construction and then the four of the Dorian. I'd have to say, well, what is the four? Well, the four of the Dorian, I can count it up and say, well, that would be a D. So one, two, three, four, it's a, it's a D, one, two, three, four. But uh, is the four then going to be a major third or a minor third? And I could do my math. I could say, well, Dorian is the second. Minus one is one plus four. That gives me five. And five is the mixolydian or the fifth of a major scale would be a one, four, five. That would be a major. So I'd make a major, right? I could do that. But you, that's the point. That's the problem here, right? Of course. I, I, I didn't want to be able to say, okay, well, if I see a four in the Dorian, I want to be able to say that that's going to be a major fourth. And then the fifth, uh, the fifth of the Dorian is going to be a minor. So if I was to play the one, four, five in the Dorian, then the one is going to be the D minor. The four is going to be a major G. Five is going to be the minor A, and then back to the Dorian. Now, obviously, it's part of the problem when you play anything other than a major or minor scale is is that it's kind of hard to make it sound like you're in that mode because our ear is so used to hearing major and minor scales, and clearly that's why I'm playing. I'm sandwiching between the 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 one right. So I'm, I'm playing the Dorian to start and end with, which is the easiest way to kind of make it sound more like a Dorian. So if I play this, I'd say, okay, the one, Dorian, D minor, the four, D major, five, A minor. Up on the, I'm messing everyone up on the numbers myself. See, but here, let's try a one, four, six. Now the six is the Locrian, so that doesn't really work because the Locrian. If I wanted to put the six in there in this area, I probably wouldn't want to play the flat fifth, right? Because that leads back to the to this to this one normally. So if I wanted that one in there, maybe I just play the one and the three, right? And I can I can kind of be like, all right, there's the one. Six is is now the Locrian, so I'm just gonna play the minor, which is just these two notes, because because now I have the B and then that D, so that's kind of like the 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 essence of it at least. So I'll just hold down that one uh, B and then back to the. So that might work, right? Instead of playing, otherwise I play that diminished. doesn't really lead to the D. Might work, but let's try it. We go from D minor to the 4, which is the G. And then let's just play it like a 
one and a three on the B. This time I'll add the fifth. if I can kind of sell it. So you can kind of make it work. Uh, but let's say... Let's go to the one, four, seven. So now I'm gonna be like, all right, the one, four is a G and the seven. So what, what would the seven be? Well, the seven, if I'm in the Dorian, is back to a major, right? Because, so if I didn't know that, I'd be like, all right, what's a one, four, seven in the Dorian? Well, I can do my math. I can say, well, Dorian is the second mode. Minus one is one, plus seven is eight. There's only seven modes. Therefore, eight minus seven is one, gives me mode number one, which is Ionian or the major scale. And of course, therefore the first of the major is a major. So it would be a C major, right? So I could say, then I could be like, if I'm doing a one, four, seven in Dorian, I'm like, all right, that's like the one D minor. little bit harder to make it sound like it's in Dorian because the the four and the seven kind of make it sound like it's it almost sounds like that four leading to the, the four is usually a, the one four five of the well the that G is <laughs> that G is the 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 fifth of the relative major which makes it sound like you're leading back home to the C then making it sound like a major scale, right? So even when you start with the D and end in the D, that progression kind of makes it sound like you're in the major. Any case, so I was kind of toying uh, with that. And then of course I can, uh, con so, I'll, so I'm thinking I'm gonna make this list, uh, this list better. So it includes all three. Now, of course, obviously we could, I could do four, I don't have to do just three notes. I can do four uh, notes, but the combinations with four chords and then adding another one like sandwiching that between the one chord is a whole lot of combinations like it's more combinations than i think people really understand like people really like mull over so so like people are usually just like well yeah just pick randomly pick and people aren't you know we're not really picking randomly we're just kind of doing we're going to end up doing the same exact thing because like we can't even visualize all the different patterns unless you actually write down all the different patterns, right? And then just, and then it's kind of more, it's actually more fun that way once you do it, I think, cause then, then you can actually test out all the different flavors without getting brain freeze with too many choices as you're trying to just randomly pick, you know, chords uh, within, within, and then, and then again, of course, once we have like three notes to just tinker around with, then it's kind of fun to move them up, try different strumming patterns and move them up. And I think, like part of my problem is that my brain there's too many choices right so your brain freezes and we're not narrowing things down to the point where i can just play with a few things just a just a few things like three chords 
uh, that I then ha can play through different areas of the fretboard is like an infinite number of, you still have an infinite number of possibilities just with that, you know? So that narrowing down, I think is like important. I was listening to someone else. I was listening to that, uh, the Rick Beato guy who keeps on interviewing all of these uh, musicians, which I don't really, <clears throat> I never really like listened to interviews with musicians before because the interviewers are all usually about asking them about their personal lives and they're all crazy and whatnot. I don't really care. I want, but but Be this Beato guy seems to be asking them about <laughs> their playing, which is kind of interesting. So it's kind of interesting uh, to hear what they say actually about, you know, their craft instead of their personal lives. So I was like, I saw this one guy was saying something that, uh, what was his name? He had a funny name. I don't even know who he is really. It was, uh, but he's a famous guy. It was, uh, anyway, it'll come to me later. But he was saying like, that to come up like I was pick like I usually just kind of noodle around and like A minor and he and he was saying how can I get a different to do something a little bit different and he was working with the timing basically saying that if you just pick random numbers between even just like one and nine and then break those numbers out into like into chunks normally we play patterns between like one and five notes at a time or something like that so if i chose so so if i chose like so, and then he started making patterns of his like soloing based on those chunks so if i was playing like let's make this a two a two a two four five he was kind of noodling around as though the first thing he would play was a two like and then the four, he would break out oftentimes between like a three and a one or a two and a two. So it'd be. And then a five, maybe a three and a three and a two. So then if I like noodled around with those patterns in my mind, it's gonna, it might differentiate how I pick it, right? So if I was like one, two, one, two, three, one. And then one, two, three, one, two. One, two, one, two, three. One two, one two, three, one. One two, three, one two. One two, one two, three, one. One two, three, one two. One two, one two, three, one. One two, three, one two. See what I'm doing? I'm just saying I'm adding. I'm making this a two, and then I'm making this four into a three one pattern. So that kind of like maybe like you might do like a drummers kind of do the, the different patterns and then I'm making this five I can make the five into a two two one pattern or maybe I make it into a three two pattern so I'm making this so I'm using these numbers I'm gonna so so I'm, I'm imagining these numbers I'm saying I'm breaking that out into like a I'm saying it's a two and then the it's gonna be let's put it over here or actually maybe I can't see that on my screen let's say I did it over here. Let's say, I'm gonna say, see if I can play around with this idea. Cause he, what he was doing was really interesting. Not sure I can do that. Seems like a, an easy concept, but those are usually the surprisingly difficult ones, those easy sounding concepts. So, that was, so if I said this was a two, which I'm just gonna play a two and then and then with the three and then there was a four which I'm gonna break out into a three one pattern and then there was a five which I'm gonna break out into a three two pattern and then I'm just gonna try to do my pick I'm just gonna noodle around like I normally would but then instead of doing a constant pat like <laughs> pattern I break it out into those little chunks, which might give me different like phrases. Maybe that's what I was thinking. I'm not sure if I'm interpreting what he was saying, right? But that's what I was thinking about. So it'd be like one two, one two three one, one two three one two, one two one two three one, one two three one two, one two one two three one, one two three one two, one two one two three one.
So I think that is kind of interesting. I don't know. I, I just started playing with it. So let's say he had. Let's say we had a nine, or nine, and and then like, like a nine, a seven, and a four. So the nine could be a four, four, five, six, four. Well, let's just nine. Let's. Why? Why? Why am I going to big numbers all of a sudden? Let's say it was like. Let's just keep it at seven, five. So the seven I can break down into a four, three, and five I'll break down to two, two, three, and the four I break down into a two, two. So, and I'll just say, okay, and I'm just kind of noodling around. I'm like, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two. Uh, 